Hi guys, it's Leonardo again with another Puppet Animation Tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to create a standard run cycle and how to make it move through a background. First of all, we need to enable the keyframe in the main layer. I'm going to use a linear interpolation for the keys. You can see that the only movement in this animation is the chest. The chest can move to one side and the other. I made this animation using the normal animation layers and a frame by frame animation. The settings I am using for the playback are in animation, playback settings, uh, you need to check the prefer speed option and you need to check the loop play. This way you can uh, check the animation in a loop. And finally, render before starting playback. This makes the playback frame rate more stable. Now uh, let's place the center of rotation of all the layers. For default, the center of rotation is in the center of the canvas. So no matter how big the canvas is, the center will be at the center point of the, of the size of the canvas. So it's necessary to change it to the center of rotation of each part of the body. In my previous video, I explained this in more detail. You can find the link in the description box. Now I am going to make it fast forward. I tried with a run cycle of 6 and it was too fast for this character. So I changed the cycle to 10. This means that the entire cycle will be 19 frames. So another thing is that I changed the keys to smooth for the body and linear just for the legs because the legs are the ones who need to move in a constant way. This cycle is based in the Richard Williams standard run cycle with the difference of the timing I did. I'm just creating the first position. The best way to move the body parts is to find it in the layer window. It is important to name the layers in a clear way. That will make it easy for you to find the parts you are looking to move. Uh, this position is called contact. It's the one that just touched the floor and has no weight. This contact position will repeat three times in my cycle for real two times and the third time will be like the final position but we are going to take this frame out because it's the same as the first so to, to avoid repeating one position is going to be taken out I didn't change the keys to linear for the legs so I can change it afterwards I'm going to use the line of these squares or rectangles like the base for my floor. These rectangles are going to help me to make the movement linear. The idea is that the shoes of the character need to move in a linear way over this path. So I'm going to use the top of the shoe as a reference. This contact position will start the cycle. Now I need to copy and paste the first frame in the last frame, in the frame 20. I can do this by right click, uh, copy and right click paste, but you can do this easily, just selecting the frame you want to move and pressing Alt, drag these frames to the frames you are looking for, in this case 20. As you can see, there is no real movement. I just copy the first frame and the last frame, and because it's the same position, the character will not move. I'm now going to create a timeline label. You can find this in animation, label, create timeline label. In the third frame will be the down position. Frame five will be the passing position, Frame 7 will be the up position and the 10th frame will be the contact position. This label will help me to find in which frame I need to pose the character using the Richard Williams run cycle. This kind of animation doesn't allow the onion skins. Because the onion skin is not working, I'm going to create my reference position. For this, I'm going to merge visible to new layer. This makes a copy of the position and I can replicate it in my second contact, the one who is the reflection of my first contact. 
I'm going to change the layer color to the standard blue and I need to put it in the background. Then I can position my character like in the first contact, but reflect it. So the left leg will be the right and vice versa and the same with the arms. It's the same position, but a reflection. You can take your time for doing this. It doesn't need to be exactly in the same position, but it's better if you place it quite close because at the end it's the same position. You can see the basic movement. Of course, the movement is too robotic and it needs to be changed. One of the things we can do now is make the up and down for the character. Remember the contact, the height of the character will be the same at the beginning. We can use the graph editor to create our up and down movement. And we need to concentrate just in the Y axis because this movement will be just up and down. We can use the Bezier handles to create our wave and because we are using smooth interpolation, this movement will be soft. You can move the character with the operation tool, but you can use the arrows too. Do the up and down arrow to find like the position you're looking for. You need to look well the down position and remember to place the second down, like the reflection down at the same height. This will create a perfect cycle. On the up position, let's check how it looks. Of course, the legs are moving quite weird, but we can fix that later. Now let's place the hands in the position, in the passing position. The arms will be in the center of the body or close to the center of the body. And this position will repeat again. We can select the frames, Alt and drag to the position we're looking for. The same for the other arm. Now we have the passing arms and the arms are looking well now. Of course, the legs are not hitting the ground, so we need to fix that. This is our down position. Uh, let's concentrate in the legs now. I'm going to place the legs in the position I need. Oh, maybe my down position is too low, so I need to place the character up a little. You can use the tool property to check the exact position and copy and paste it to, to make it perfect. Now I am placing the legs in the right position. Now my up position. Remember that uh, this is going to be made in linear. Uh, the keys are linear, so need to move in a constant way.
Now, to create the second part of the cycle, I'm going to merge visible to new layer. I'm going to do this for the down, the passing position, and the up position. Now we can use these um, poses to create the reflections for the second part of the loop. I'm going to make it standard blue, like the draft, to separate the colors and in this way it will be easier for me to find the pose. We need to be patient in this part. The option is to place the reflected parts in the position of the first cycle. I'm going to do this fast forward. This is the same that we did with the contact position. I didn't create timeline labels for the second part, but you can count how many frames and place it in the right position. It's not too hard. Now let's check the movement. The cycle will repeat. We need to fix the intermediate positions because remember the shoes need to hit the reference line for the floor. Now it's working, the shoes are hitting our reference line and now we can erase the reference positions we use. We can animate the head too. Maybe we can put it down in the down position and up in the up position and make a loop for the head. This will repeat in the second part. And copy or click and drag to copy the, the, the key. And this is how it looks, the animation. It looks quite well. The movement is smooth and it's looking great now. With this, we can save and start our second part. It's how to place the character in a background and make it move through this background. We make the animation in a separate file. Now, we need to import this file in my main animation. You can go to File, Import, and select Create File Object. Now, you can look for your animation. In my case, it's the file Run Cycle Test. Let's move this animation to the center. You can see that there is a problem. There is a gray background in my character. And how can we fix that? It's quite easy. Go to the actual file, erase the background, save, and now it's updated. Now we need to create this cycle. I place these rectangles in, in this file too as a reference for the actual distance for the movement of my character. Let's move up our timeline. In this position, it's easier for us to work here because uh, this file is horizontal, so it's better in this position. Now you can copy and paste our animation and it will create a loop every time you paste it. So we need just three of these loops and we need to place our first position. I'm going to use the center loop for the center position. And now we need to move two of these rectangles distance to create our first part. But there is a problem. You can see that the shoes are sliding 
in the ground. They are not hitting the ground properly. So let's check the animation file. And I think the movement is not linear how it should be. Let's check how well is the position. I find the mistake. It need to move three spots and I was placing the shoes in the middle and it need to be every third. So now I need to create three rectangles in every spot. And I need to adjust the position of each step in one of these thirds. So let's do this quite fast to fix the problem. My mistake was that I was doing the animation in six, and when you do it in six, it's every half, but now it's in n, so it was every third the movement of the shoes. It's an easy fix, and that is one of the advantages of this technique. You can edit the animation file, and when you finish the animation, you just save the result, and it will update the file in my main animation. Now that everything is fixed, let's save and let's check how it moves in my main animation. You can see that the shoes are stick to the ground. It has a little bit of movement, but it's not quite visible. So we can do the next cycle. We need to move it to of the rectangles. We can zoom in and place it in the perfect position. And my last position is outside, so I'm going to move it an arbitrary distance. Now, let's check our run. Oh, you can see that the run is working quite well. The movement is smooth. The character is quite well established to the ground. And there is a mistake that the squares are showing. So you just need to erase it or close the visibility and save and it will disappear and everything will work perfectly. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you find something interesting in here. This technique can help you to make these walk cycles or run cycles when the background is static and you need to move the character. I hope you like it and maybe if you find this kind of uh, videos interesting you can subscribe maybe uh, see you in the next video bye